Hey, everybody. It's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. Pastor Bradmeyer, how you been? You know, I'm doing pretty good. It's fall up here. You know, it's North Dakota. It's always like on the verge of being winter or is winter. But it's getting to be fall and then all the fall stuff's getting done. You know, we got the, the chickens are going to get butchered here soon. The beehives are going to get winterized. The garden's about done. And then I will have time to, you know, not do those things. It'll be great. <laughs> You make it sound so scenic, and uh, it, it's it's always just a little bit, yeah, it brings out some longing in a Midwesterner like me. The winter time? Like the fall and the winter, yeah. I'm I'm okay with it. I like fall. Fall's a good season. It's cool. You get to have bonfires. Apple cider's a thing. You know, pumpkin spice is good. I, I mean, I, I love pumpkin pie. I just don't like it in Ooh. my coffee. I was going to say, like, pumpkin spice is not my, like, that's that's where I draw a line. I like it in bread, though. Pumpkin bread's good. Pumpkin, Pumpkin bread. Bars. Okay, just leave yeah. it. Leave it alone right there. Yeah. yeah, no, no drinks, no drinks. That's I'm I'm not basic white girl enough for that. All right, now that all the white women are done listening, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we've been tackling questions that our kids ask us in uh, in youth group and how to go about them. And I love them because you can usually answer them within about two or three words, but then they're actually still worth talking about for the rest of the podcast, just you know to fill time. Uh, so <laughs> here we go. A uh, hey, pastor, uh, I know Jesus says not to be anxious, but I'm still anxious by the end of church. What am I supposed to do? Okay, well, there's a couple angles to come at this from, and the, this is going to be more than two or three words because I'm already, you know, past that since you want me to word pad and everything. All right, so firstly, um, what I would tell you to do as a pastor would be, okay, just meditate on why Jesus tells us not to be anxious. And it's because hmm. he reminds us God cares for us. Our Father in heaven provides to us everything we need in our daily bread and, in fact, promises to do so. So we don't have to worry about the everyday stuff because God promises to take care of us. And, you know, he does that in various ways through our parents, through the jobs that we have, through friends and family, charity, whatever, right? There's lots of ways that he does that. So that's one way to do it is to remind ourselves of God's care and love. And providence is the big fancy word we can use there to describe all that. The second thing is, if you find that even after meditating on that and going to the scriptures and talking to your pastor and, you know, sometimes anxiety gets wrapped up in guilt. And so confession and absolution with your pastor can be a great way to help address that, too. But even let's just say you do all the things that I would tell you to do as a pastor, you're still struggling, you're still anxious, you're still worried all the time. At that point, we might want to talk about going into something like Christian counseling or therapy, maybe talking to your family doctor, you know, about anti-anxiety medications and that sort of thing. And the secret here, I think that not the secret, but the, the, the gist of this is as Christians, it's not an either or. We need to care for the spiritual self as well as the physical self, as well as the mental self. And sometimes those things all need to be done in concert with each other. We have to address all of them at the same time. Right. Uh, because you have a body and a mind and a soul, and these are knit together. Uh, we're, we're not Gnostics. We, we don't believe in that disconnect. And so like, you know, if, if you are a soldier who comes home uh, wounded from the war, you can lose a limb that will still itch on the other side of things. And, and so in the same way, you, you can confront the mental anguish that is anxiety spiritually and physically um, and, and see those things. But I think it's also probably important to recognize that like, if you are anxious, it's not a sign that your religion isn't working. It's actually right. just something that your religion is supposed to confront uh, because we love to sort of work in those sort of all or nothing things. So like, you know, if, if I, if I just pray hard enough, the anxiety will just go away. And in the same way that we'll talk about, like, if I just pray hard enough, the cancer will just go away. Yeah. Uh, that, that all or nothing mentality gets really, really dangerous, especially when it comes to stuff that you worry about because, well, there's still stuff you're finding to you know worry about. Well, that is the problem. And the other thing too is to remember, prayer is not like magic. <laughs> you know, if I pray really, 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 really hard, and really earnestly, and I move to great drops of sweat, you know, just like Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, and I, I start sweating drops of blood because I'm praying so hard. Well, that doesn't actually make the object of my prayer any more likely to come true because that's up to God and his will. And so, you know, it's it's prayer is not like this magic tool. It's not a means of grace. It doesn't force God to do anything. So uh, what is prayer? Well, we've talked about that before. Go find that video. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's important to kind of come back to because you, you contrasted it with magic. And in any sort of book or movie or anything, magic is always the same. It's like, how do I poke at something I can't see to get something I can? Right. How do I and, manipulate the unseen forces of the universe through magic words or rituals or whatever, right? Chicken bones and stuff. Right. But that's always you driving the ship instead of somebody actually taking care of you. And when prayer becomes about stuff instead of about comfort, you're actually only going to find more stuff to be anxious about because now you're in charge. Being in charge, not good for your anxiety. Trust me. No, it's not good for your anxiety. 
And I think that's one of the major pieces of, you know, on a mental level that I found with anxiety is anxiety is this anticipation of bad things coming in the future. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that I'm worried about something that's going to happen. So when I get anxious, what do I sit and fret about? I fret about, you know, my kids and what they're doing at school and what kind of people they're going to grow up to be. And I fret about stuff going on at church, which is what I do for a living. And I fret about what my friends are doing. And I fret about what people think about me. And I fret about this thing falling apart on me. And I fret about my lawn being too long. And these are, the, you know, and, and they fret. And to, they cause me varying degrees of anxiety and stress because of what they are. And usually they pile on each other you know? Mm-hmm. And so what's the antidote to that? Well, the antidote is to remind myself, it's actually true that I'm not in control, but God is. So that can be a huge mental um, um, salve, you know, something that helps soothe and alleviate the anxiety. And again, there is such a thing as having anxiety that needs to be addressed with other angles and disciplines. So talking to a therapist can help um, and getting medication can help. But I want this, I want to understand, I want people to understand this is a package deal, right? Right. Um, Because our temptation in society is we treat everything physiologically. And so you go to the doctor and you get what? You get some anti-anxiety pills, you know, and you get some antidepressants. And then that's supposed to be everything. It makes everything great. Well, the problem is, is it doesn't actually solve the root of the anxiety. It just covers over the symptoms for a while. And maybe that gives you the space to actually start processing through the stuff, which is thinking about it and dealing with it in a more healthy way, which it can do. But sometimes it doesn't, which is why we also need the other end of things, which is the mental part, you know, the therapy, learning how to process and think about these things and handling them and learning skills to deal with them. But we also need to have the spiritual end, which, of course, centers in the forgiveness of sins and God's promises. If we don't have all of that, then we just taken care of the symptoms. We haven't actually handled the problem. And if you do that, it'll fester even if you paper over it. So one of the great things about this um, is you started out this way. Um, and even sort of some of the, the sort of secular approaches to this with without any hope, but, but attempt the same thing, is that because you can't just shut your brain off with anxiety, you can't just stop it as much as you wish you could. You need to learn how to imagine again. Um, see, the devil will give you the gift, or the devil will take the gift of imagination that God gave you, and he'll twist it into worry. Um, you'll, you'll conceive of what if there was no God, or what if he hated you, and, and then all of those things that come from it. But to imagine again is actually to meditate on God's promises as if they're actually true. Um, and, and there's there's actually hope inside of Christendom that does this. There are certainly uh, mental tools and, and thought processes that can be helpful inside of uh, the counseling world that are good to sort of help you reframe your worry into a more neutral place. But but Christianity is wonderful because it actually dares you to look at all of it and then just hope. Um, yeah, everything that I do is bad. God still cares for grass that catches on fire. Everything that I do is, I, I'm incapable at all. Birds can't have bank accounts and God feeds them. Like he, he challenges you as even as he tells you, don't be anxious. He goes, Imagine, imagine if there was such a thing as a God who loved you enough to die for you, to conquer death and to save you even in spite of yourself. Think about those things. And then as your brain starts to slow down to at least a normal speed, try then, then maybe we can start to grab control of it and, and set it on a normal path again. You know, I, I think you, you bring up something here that, that I guess you didn't quite um, say it straightforwardly, but it's important to consider. We don't think about our mind betraying us because of sin. Right. We, we don't usually but think sure that does. We, 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 we do. It does. Right. Every, yeah. you know, if you, you break up the mind into its kind of constituent parts, you know, you got the memory. Well, our memories can falter and fail. We can misremember things or whatever, you know, our senses fail us. I can mishear something or whatever. Um, our imaginations can fail us because we start thinking and entertaining about things that aren't true and aren't helpful and are in fact destructive. Um, our reason can betray us because it'll lead us to bad thinking, bad thought patterns, or it can actually justify evil and, you know, unbelief and those sorts of things. And so all of our parts of us are capable of betraying and hurting us. You know, Mm -hmm. you talk to old people and their knees hurt, right? Well, their knees have failed them and their knees have betrayed them, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And this is the same with, with every part of us, including our minds. And I think we need to remember that just because we feel something or we perceive something to be the case doesn't actually mean that that's the correct way to understand it. And I know this isn't in vogue to talk about, but sometimes our feelings are not actually correct. You know, and while we do have those feelings and I can't change, I can't force myself to feel a way that I'm not feeling. I think it's worth asking ourselves, do these, are these feelings warranted? Do they actually correspond to what I know to be true? Cause right. I might be really super anxious about something. And then if I stop and I force myself to slow down and think about it and go, well, wait a minute, I'm really worked up about what my neighbor thinks about my grass in my front yard, which is really stupid to worry about because mm-hmm. who cares? You know, it's not full of weeds. It's not three feet high. It's just been two days longer than I usually mow it. I mean, who cares, right? 
It, it gives you something to, to grab hold of. Um, and that's, that's important. Um, and, and so as we start to talk about anxiety, um, even because like, we've kind of talked about this one, I think one of the places that we need to sort of close on is that in all of those places, you don't do it yourself. Like you don't fix yourself with counseling yourself. You don't fix yourself even with, with just sort of telling yourself Jesus loves you yourself. Talk to your pastor, go to confession absolution, have him pray with you, have him teach you a Psalm, go to the Psalms, which are again, at least outside of your own immediate thought process in all of these places, deal with something outside of yourself because this is how God helps us. I think it's a great idea for every Christian of whatever age, you have your own Bible, you should have a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, talk to your pastor, your church would love to give you a Bible. Yeah. If you don't have a church, find a church, a good Lutheran church. Yeah, your, your Lord pastor. would love to give you a church. And they would love uh. to give you a church and a Bible, actually. And then what you do is you should ask your pastor, if you don't know the Bible real well, well, you can change that, read it a little bit every day. But as you go through the Bible, or if you haven't done it yet, and you just want to know some places to go that you, when you are freaking out about stuff, talk to your pastor and your pastor will give you some passages. And I would even go so far as to say those little plastic sticky tab things that, you know, you see like fancy legal documents have or whatever. Maybe you haven't signed any legal documents yet. And God bless you if you haven't. But, you know, <laughs> those little tabs you can buy, you stick in there or sticky notes or something, slap them in there right on the passages that are good, right where they start. Hmm. And that way you can grab your Bible from the drawer, on the nightstand, wherever it is you keep it. And when you're feeling stressed out, you can open it up and you just grab one of those little tabs and go right there. And immediately you find something that tells you and reminds you of God's promises. Because the issue with anxiety is, is it turns you in and you just kind of spiral inward into yourself. And the solution to that, one of the ways that we combat that is by trying to draw your attention out of yourself. And God's word is external to us. God's promises are external to us and it can help refocus and give perspective on things. Love it. Pastor, thanks so much. Hey, thanks for having me. Have a good one.